My name is Casey Morris and I'm the parent of two students at Bixby Public Schools. I wanted to be at the school board meeting tonight, but I have two sick kids and can't attend. So I thought I would just record what I plan to say. Um, so as I know you're aware, there's a public conversation going on about book banning and censorship. I'm offering my thoughts as a parent of children who would be directly affected by a book currently under review by the district. So first you need to know about Ben. Ben was four years old and his brother was seven when I got a phone call on a rainy Thursday morning that the virus Ben was fighting was no virus. He had leukemia. We would need to run to St. Francis um, for surgery to place the support and begin what would turn out to be years of chemo. With no immune system, we had to stay home and wear masks way before it became the norm. Uh, it was isolating in many ways beyond the physical. On his first day of pre-K, Ben came home from school and he was so excited and told me how wonderful everything was. And he said, but mom, where are the kids' poles? Poles, I asked. He said, yeah, poles with the bags. He was talking about chemo poles. All the kids he had been around the previous two years had chemo poles. These experiences shaped him and his brother and they altered their life. There are not many fairy tales or stories where a kid fights cancer. So when one comes along, I'm always ready to read it and when appropriate, give it to my kids. It helps them feel less isolated, less weird. Like maybe their traumatic experience doesn't also have to be a lonely one. That there are people, even pretend characters, who understand what it's like. PTSD, anxiety, and depression are all common for children and families who deal with childhood cancer. And a book that tells the story of that experience arms my children with the words to talk about how they felt then or how they're feeling now. All children deserve access to books that reflect their experiences and identities. Orphans deserve to read about an orphan who saves the wizarding world from Voldemort. Children with absent fathers deserve to read about a boy with an absent father who made friends with the centaur and prevented a war of the titans by stopping a lightning thief. Ben and Ethan, 6th and 10th graders at Bixby Public Schools, deserve access to a book about a kid fighting cancer. Censorship removes that access and therefore steals an opportunity for healing and growth. Now, is me and Earl and the dying girl appropriate for my 12-year-old? Not quite yet. That's my call as his mother. But I'm not so arrogant to think that that's my right to make that call for every other kid in the district. In fact, that book is appropriate for my 16-year-old, illustrating that within my one single family, there is variance in what's appropriate and what's not. I trust our librarians to hold, who hold higher degrees in information science and literature and have access to international media guides and expert resources to make the call on what books are age appropriate for our libraries. They base that on reading levels, educational psychology, developmental psychology, neuropsychology, they can put the books in the library and I'll take it from there. I will make the final call on what my children consume, but I have no right to make that call for anyone else. I wouldn't dream of demanding that every 10th grader pick up the emperor of all maladies so they can immerse themselves into the world of cancer. Not every 10th grader can handle it and I have no way of knowing which kid would be harmed and which would benefit. The same is true when we remove a book from the library. We have no way of knowing which kids we're harming. No one is saying that kids don't have the right or that parents don't have the right to ban books when they feel it's inappropriate from their children. I'm saying they don't have the right to ban books from my children. They don't have the right to ban books to, from all children. I'm worried about sexual content and how women are exploited in the media. So I teach my kids to be firm in their morals and then I trust that they'll put the book down when they come across something I don't approve of. I'm worried about indoctrination, so I teach my kids to think critically and be critical of things they read and evaluate whether they agree with what they've read or not. I'm worried about slanted literature, so I teach my kids to research context and background information and motive, follow the money about what they're reading so they can make the call on whether they trust something as factual or not. I'm worried about making children feel guilty about the actions of their ancestors, so I've taught them that the sins of their fathers are not their own. They should always be willing to learn how to be better than their parents. That's our goal always, isn't it? I share the same worries as the parents who want to ban the book, but I have a better solution. We have uncovered a gap with our parental access to our district catalog so that we can all make better informed decisions for our individual children. 
I support more transparency and resources for libraries to make our district catalog more accessible to the public so that I can review content as needed and remove access to content that I feel is inappropriate for Ben and Ethan, but no other child when I feel that's appropriate. In no way does any form of book banning serve our community or our children. Mine is just one example of how well-intentioned concern can have unforeseen negative impact on children and families. There are hundreds more, and if we start down the slippery slope of blanket censorship, we will find ourselves in a world of hurt instead of healing. I ask that you allow parents to make well-informed decisions on behalf of our children and allocate resources to our libraries to make that happen. We need an easily accessible library catalog. Book banning is simply not the answer to this issue. Thank you.